After promising to help Oh Young Sil handle the matter, young man Park Jimin hastily searched for the rumored magazine. Ji Ho had a clandestine date with the model Tan Teen at the nightclub, known in the film industry as the Big Hearted Romantic and referred to as Ji Ho by An Na, considered a big shot in the industry. Ji Ho is believed to exploit his relationships to coerce connections with female artists, always shrouded in secrecy and not exposed. However, this time, the main reason causing public opinion to reverse is that some rising stars are standing up against Ji Ho. Among them, the most prominent is the film queen Toeing Ji Yen. Park Jimin, holding a steaming cup of coffee, couldn't hide his surprise and muttered, Toeing Ji Yen, she has such significant influence. Toeing Ji Yen, talented and virtuous, belongs to the category of masterpieces, enjoys philanthropy, and has an excellent public image. She regularly donates money to charitable causes. Someone reported to Park Jimin. This time, Ji Ko could be overturned, almost entirely thanks to her influence. So I think to defeat Ji Ho, we need to employ a strategy. Upon hearing the two words, strategy, young man Park Jimin immediately had an idea. The other person handed him a document and said, I've hired a few detectives. They are currently investigating and believe this person may have sensitive information about Ji Ho. The address is Ho Hadong, number 305, Yang Suk Kim. If we find this person named Yang Suk Kim, it might be easy to overthrow Ji Ho. Young man Park Jimin stared intently at the paper containing the address and the name of the person to find. Ho Ha Dong, number 28, room 305, Yang Sa Kim. Quickly, Park Jimin reached Ho Ha Dong, number 28, lifting his head to look at a dilapidated building. He muttered to himself, who would open an office in a place like this for business? As Park Jimin took a few steps inside, a loud voice echoed, your mom, last month said this month. This month said next month. Do you think I'm running a charity here? Park Jimin, puzzled, couldn't comprehend what was happening. Young man Park Jimin approached the room and discreetly peeked inside. It seemed that Park Jimin recognized the person kneeling there and thought to himself, Oh, it's him. The stout person held a baseball bat and pointed it straight at Yang Su Kim's face, saying, Yang Su Kim, if you don't pay today, I'll cut off one of your hands. Yang Su Kim knelt, clasping his hands, pleading, Young Master G, give me a few more days. I'm preparing for a new film. It's guaranteed to be a huge hit, and I'll pay you back ten times the amount borrowed when it becomes successful. G, infuriated, lunged at Yang Su Kim, squeezing his face. Should I lend you more considering your talk? I heard your decline is because you offended the film industry big shot Ji Ho. Do you want to rise again? Stab Yang Su Kim with his face swollen from the squeeze, still tried to plead. Young Master Ji, my new work is genuinely promising. The enraged Ji was about to strike with the baseball bat while shouting loudly, a film? Today, I'll make sure you remember this for life. Unexpectedly, the voice of young man Park Jimin rang out, stop, stop, let me deal with him. As he finished speaking, a punch landed on Ji's face like a thunderbolt, distorting his expression. A tooth flew out leaving his lips with a bloody gap. He was thrown far and slid across the floor with a loud crash. Getting up, he touched his swollen face with one hand, angrily shouting, Who dares to seek death? Part Jimin walked over slowly, seeking death. Even if your father Ji Cho Ti stands in front of me, he wouldn't dare to act recklessly like this. Jai Yun, I advise you to watch your language. Don't involve your family in this. Stout Jai Yun quickly realized, Oh my! It's the deity, Chairman Bakyun, heir to the hidden wealthy Park family, the current successor of the Park family. Jai Yun gritted his teeth, recalling, Dad warned me explicitly never to provoke him again. Subsequently, he cowered like a dog, clasped his hands, and bowed before Park Jimin, saying, This is not my Jimin anymore. Since you're here, I have to leave. Please don't see me off. I'll go right away. Yang Su Kim found Ji's young master's behavior very strange, both submissive and fearful in front of Park Jimin, utterly perplexing. Immediately afterward, Ji Yun dashed away, leaving his shoes behind. Seeing him sprint so swiftly surprised both Park Jimin and Yang Su Kim. Yang Su Kim started to feel a mixture of fear and admiration, thinking, the Ji family in Jai Umbukum is known to be very influential. 
But how can this young man terrify Jai Yun to the point of running away barefoot? With such a strong support, what is there to fear from Ji Ho? As Yang Su Kim moved away, Park Jimin spoke up. All right, the nuisance is gone. You're Yang Su Kim, right? I need your help with something. Yang Su Kim adjusted his glasses and quickly replied. The assistance will be discussed later. First, I have a small request. Immediately, he knelt down, bowing repeatedly. Park Sr., please accept me as your subordinate. I will serve and support you in the future. After repeatedly rubbing his forehead to relieve the ache, Yang Su Kim sat down, sipping tea, awaiting the response from the young boss Park Jimin. Curiously, he asked Park Jimin, So boss, aren't you looking to overthrow Ji Ho? Park Jimin, in a loud burst of anger, replied, I've said it, I'm not your foster parent, but I came to you because of this matter. Yang Su Kim furrowed his brows, thinking to himself, Does he know what I've hidden? However, this person seems influential. Maybe I can offer him something. Thinking so, Yang Su Kim told Park Jimin, I can indeed overthrow Jai Ho, but have conditions. Park Jimin, nonchalant, said, Speak and let the price be known. However, Yang Su Kim confidently asserted, I don't need money, if not as a foster father invest in me. I want to act, and I will prove to them that Yang Su Kim can rise from any fall. Observing Yang Su Kim's determined expression, Park Jimin thought to himself, Such passion for art, truly living up to the title of the former genius director, helping him might be worthwhile. After a moment of contemplation, Park Jimin remembered the film company he recently established for Oh Young Sil realizing it would be a suitable fit for Yang Su Kim. He said to the stout man, I just opened a film company for Oh Young Sil. Go and talk to her. If the funds are insufficient, give me a call. Yang Su Kim excitedly exclaimed, A loyal friend speaks truth to his friend's son. With your father's words, your son can be at ease. Afterward, Yang Su Kim confidently took out a USB and said, This is my secret weapon. This video once revealed, will shake not only J-Ho, but the entire entertainment industry. The stout man then connected the USB to the computer, and as Park Jimin watched the video on the screen, he questioned in amazement, your assassin's weapon is this video. Even though Park Jimin hadn't officially accepted him as a foster son, the stout man insisted with determination, exactly, just open it, and you'll understand. Saying this, Yang Su Kim pressed the button to open the video. Once the video played, Park Jimin was left astonished, unable to contain himself, exclaiming, What is this? The video depicted an intimate scene between a couple, leaving Park Jimin in disbelief, film queen Toeing Ji Yen having a relationship like this with Ji Ho. Unbelievable. With this, I can blackmail them for a significant sum. Yang Su Kim cautiously responded, I dare not. Blackmailing leads to jail, and decides, I don't have any backing. Who knows, I might be eliminated before I can react. Park Jimin draped an arm around Yang Su Kim's shoulder and reassured, Don't worry, now I've got you covered. With this piece of evidence, Ji Ho and Toeing Ji Yen are done for. Yang Su Kim had a relieved expression. Yes, Dad, it won't be a problem. Switching scenes to another location, Oh Young Sil was looking at her phone, muttering, Ji Ho and Toeing Ji Yen. How many young and reckless idiots have they hired? It's been three days of constant insults and relentless spamming. Frustrated, Oh Young Sil tossed her phone aside, saying, It's not a big deal. At most, I'll withdraw from the entertainment industry. I'm too naive, completely not their match. Unexpectedly, at this moment, Park Jimin called. Oh Young Sil found the call a bit surprising and puzzling. Why is he calling at this time? After some thought, Oh Young Sil answered the phone. Park Jimin's voice echoed from the speaker. Oh Young Sil, are you at home? Oh Young Sil, in a timid voice, replied, I guess, I'm at home, all alone. What's up? Are you coming over? I'll show you a hot movie. After saying that, Park Jimin hung up, blushing. Oh Young Sil muttered, Park Jimin, this rascal is coming over. Why is he looking for me? And deliberately asking if I'm home alone. And what's with the mention of a hot movie? Right after that, Oh Young Sil thought of a grim scenario, clutching herself tightly. Perhaps he can't control himself anymore, wanting to take advantage of my body. When the scene shifted to Oh Young Sil's mansion, Park Jimin and Yang Su Kim arrived at the door. 
As the doorbell rang, Oh Young Sil glared and thought to herself, fast, indeed, quite impatient. Seems like he and the other men aren't much different after all. Afterwards, Oh Young Sil spoke up, come in. She stepped out to open the door, and as the door swung open, she saw another unfamiliar man. Oh Young Sil thought to herself, why is there another person? Who is this? She glanced at Park Jimin and then muttered in a corner, Park Jimin, this damn guy thinks one of me bringing another person along. Park Jimin saw Oh Young Sil's expression, but didn't understand. The young man exclaimed in confusion. Then, looking at Oh Young Sil with a puzzled expression, Park Jimin said to her, First, don't say that. He gestured towards Yang Suk Kim and continued, Let me introduce. This is Director Yang Suk Kim. This time, we plan to completely overturn Ji Ho. Thanks to him. Yang Suk Kim politely raised his hand in greeting. Hello. Chairwoman Oh. At this moment, the girl realized she had misunderstood the situation. Oh Young Sil felt embarrassed and thought, so he wasn't trying to sleep with me, but genuinely helping me find a solution. After this realization, Oh Young Sil also greeted politely, Nice to meet you. Oh Young Sil gazed steadily at Park Jimin, while the young man was discussing something with Yang Sa Kim. The feeling of having someone to rely on like this is truly amazing. After watching the video, Oh Young Sil felt extremely excited. She exclaimed with enthusiasm, Damn, it's amazing. I never expected Toling Ji Yen to be that kind of person. Park Jimin affirmed, With this evidence in hand, Ji Ho and Toling Ji Yen are now nothing more than scum. Having obtained evidence to defeat her opponents, Oh Young Sil joyfully exclaimed, I love you, Park Jimin. Park Jimin replied, I'll give you 20 billion. Quickly handle this, then establish a film company. Director Dong also has capital to make the movies he wants, mutually benefiting each other. Once again, having successfully spent a large sum of money, Park Jimin gleefully thought to himself, spending 20 billion at once, and still having a film company to continue burning money. Oh Young Sil, I've got this woman. After the video was uploaded, it quickly became a hot topic online with the headline, Reality Unveiled, Viewers Shock. Not suitable for children. Director An Nai and famous actress Tong Ji Yen's explicit video surfaces, featuring no modesty and even close ups. The video attracted a large number of interested fans. This is currently the hottest topic on social media. Right after that, under the media pressure, a slew of reporters converged towards Tong Ji Yen to dig for information. They approached Tong Ji Yen for an interview, asking, Mrs. Tong Ji Yen, Please explain the video posted online today. Can you clarify your relationship with the director on Na? Toen Ji Yen remained silent. Before the journalist could hear a response from her, her female assistant spoke up. Step aside, step aside. These are entirely fabricated stories. That video is a fake. Stop bothering my actress. After escaping the media's encirclement, Toen Ji Yen quickly rushed into her car and slammed the door shut. Frustrated and grinding her teeth, she pondered, Who is playing with me? Why is there a video at that moment? Switching scenes to the Jindu Hotel, at this moment, An Nai was entangled in bed with another girl when the police stormed into the room. Is this An Nai? We have received an accusation alleging that you forcibly assaulted several young actresses. Cooperate with the station for our investigation. If not, we will have to use force. Quickly, handcuffs were placed in the hands of An Nai also known as Ji Ho. Looking at the handcuffs in his hands, he felt as if he had fallen into an abyss. It's over. Everything is over. Transitioning to the personal press conference of Oh Young Sil, the recent scandal surrounding the alleged forced relationship of the actress Oh Young Sil was once again overturned. All truths have been clarified, and Oh Young Sil is holding a press conference to announce significant news. The press conference attracts a large crowd of journalists. In front of the gathered audience, Oh Young Sil speaks. Today, I invite you all to this press conference to announce some news. Oh Young Sil, along with director Yang Su Kim, holds a sign with the name of their new film production company, Young Sil Film. She declares, I and director Yang Su Kim will establish a new film company. Next, the company will allocate a budget of 2 billion for director Yang to shoot a new film. We hope everyone is looking forward to it. Upon hearing the figure of 2 billion, Everyone in the room expresses amazement. Oh my, two billion, truly rich and generous. 
Oh Young Sil has turned the tide. I wonder which conglomerate is backing her. After speaking, the media professionals continuously film and take photos to create content for their news. Transitioning to the dormitory, at this moment, in his room, Park Jimin opens his phone to watch Oh Young Sil's press conference. Hearing the mention of the conglomerate, the financial support behind actress, Oh Young Sil, Park Jimin thinks to himself, why do I feel like I'm a bit like a secret boss behind the screen now? Anyway, this feeling is not bad at all. Ha ha ha. Below the dormitory, Hyunjin Ryu, holding his phone while walking, mutters, Humph, Park Jimin, the dead dog causing trouble in the school is not enough. He even dares to disturb the goddess Yang Weibai. I'll see if you survive this time. After that, he immediately calls Kim Jisoo. Hello, is this Kim Jisoo, my fellow student? I'm Gin Jin Ryu from the Physical Education Department. I have some things to talk to you about. Closing the scene at the university campus, after receiving the call from Gin Jin Ryu, Kim Jisoo was hit by a surge of jealousy. This time, she no longer trusted Park Jimin as she had before and hastily went to the university to find the young man to clarify everything. Seeing Kim Jisoo in a hurry, her friend in the green shirt advised, Kim Jisoo, don't be too hasty. Are you planning to confront Park Jimin just because of a phone call? Kim Jisoo walked quickly, drawing curious glances from many passing students. Her eyes reflected a mixture of sadness and a hint of disappointment as she said, Hyun Jin Ryu, bringing out his whole gang to swear that Park Jimin is fooling around with many girls inside and outside the school, even stealing his girlfriend. Doesn't it sound like a made-up story? Walking and explaining her emotions to her green-shirted friend, Kim Jisoo continued, of course, I know it's too daring to go looking for Park Jimin just because of a phone call from Kim Jin Ryu. But lately, Park Jimin hardly seeks me out. Kim Jisoo's face clearly showed a sense of unease. Her eyes vacant as she said, I feel a bit uneasy. Women's intuition tells me he's acting strangely. The girl in the green shirt comforted Kim Jisoo with kind words about Park Jimin, saying, I understand. A wealthy and outstanding man like him would make anyone anxious about potential loss but Park Jimin seems to be a faithful person. In the midst of tranquility, a group of students suddenly became noisy, directing their attention to one side. They excitedly discussed the arrival of Park Min Young. Hurry, look, here comes Park. Is she going after that Park Jimin again? He's really lucky. The girl in the green shirt added, Park Jimin probably won't be fooling around with women. Just as she finished saying that they saw Park Min Young standing right in front of them. She stood there silently, as if contemplating something. Park Min Young, with a puzzled look, thought long and hard about how to express herself to Park Jimin. She emptily mused, How should I say it to him? If Park Jimin really likes me, should I agree or decline? Coincidentally, as Park was contemplating Kim Jisoo's boyfriend, Kim Jisoo herself arrived. Kim Jisoo exclaimed loudly, Hey Park, why are you here? Park Min Young startled and turned around, exclaiming, Kim Jisoo, perhaps due to a quirk, she seemed startled. Park Min Young muttered, Damn, why is she here? Kim Jisoo widened her eyes and asked her senior, Park, you graduated? Why are you back at school without telling me? Caught off guard, Park Min Young hesitated, her cheeks turning red. She explained, Oh, I came to find Park Jimin. Please don't misunderstand. I'm here to discuss business with Jimin. After responding to Kim Jisoo, Min Young thought to herself, I shouldn't have mentioned Park Jimin's name. Kim Jisoo must be suspicious now. Damn it. As Park Min Young expected, mentioning Park Jimin made Kim Jisoo doubtful. However, she didn't say anything to Park, silently pondering. Park used to dislike Park Jimin. Why is she collaborating with him now? When did they become close? A honking sound interrupted the scene as a car was parking right in front of the dormitory. The students resumed gossiping, directing their attention towards the car. Who's that? The car has parked right below the dorm building. The black car stopped in front of Kim Jisoo and Park Min Young. Slightly surprised, the two women paused their conversation, curious about what was happening. A beautiful girl stepped out of the car, capturing the admiration of the students on campus. They praised Yang Weibai, saying, Oh, she's from the film industry, right? So gorgeous. Everyone complimented Yang Weibai, acknowledging, She's quite stunning. Our campus beauty queen can't compare. Kim Jisoo also fell under the enchantment of Yang Weibai's beauty, 
and exclaimed, She's truly beautiful. Her friend in the green shirt couldn't help but sigh. She had such charisma. Park Min Young, with a wry smile, muttered, Why is she here too? It's like a cosmic collision of Mars and Earth. Yang Weibai approached and inquired, Hello everyone, may I ask if Park Jimin, a second-year literature student at Haver, lives here? Hearing Yang Weibai mention her boyfriend's name, Kim Jisoo stood still for a few seconds, then hesitated and asked, Are you looking for Park Jimin? What's your relationship with him? Yang Weibai's eyes sparkled, and she didn't respond, only making a sound. With tactful language, Yang Weibai asked Kim Jisoo, I wonder what your relationship is with Park Jimin. Her demeanor at this moment was undeniably dignified, calm, and contemplative. The faces of Kim Jisoo and Yang Weibai, as they looked at each other, had changed from the initial impressions, as if an unseen thunderbolt struck between them. The girl in the green shirt raised her hand and advised, Let's find a place to sit and talk. Standing here isn't the best. Transitioning to a cafe, all four girls sit together to discuss the matter involving Park Jimin. Except for the girl in the green shirt, everyone has tense expressions, resembling taut strings. The four of them sit in silence, gazing at each other for quite a while, none willing to break the silence. Sensing this, Yang Weibai speaks up. Since neither of you is speaking up, I'll go first. Yang Weibai stirs her coffee with her hand, and then looks at Kim Jisoo. Addressing the issue directly, do you like Park Jimin? Faced with Yang Weibai's straightforward question, Kim Jisoo rolls her eyes and blushes in embarrassment. At the cafe, after a while of staring at each other, Yang Weibai broke the silence. She asked Kim Jisoo, do you like Park Jimin? Kim Jisoo, surprised by Yang Weibai's direct question, raised her eyebrows and replied, yes, I like Park Jimin. He likes me too. What's the problem? Kim Jisoo's tone sounded somewhat resentful and uncomfortable. Yang Weibai raised both hands in a dismissive gesture, smiled, and said, Like you? Don't kid me. Park Jimin has been pursuing me for five years. In high school, he even took a beating for me. Making mistakes in love is forgivable, but you have to admit it. Hearing Yang Weibai speak, Kim Jisoo angrily shouted, No, that's not true. The girl in the green shirt immediately defended Kim Jisoo, saying, what she means is, Kim Jisoo from our family is the third party. Although Park Jimin got into fights for her, he once gave Kim Jisoo a mansion worth over a million, not to mention a piano worth 500 million. And what about you? What do you have? Hearing this, Yang Weibai also had some doubts in her heart. She thought to herself, Firm determination, a crystal piano auctioned off mysteriously by Park Jimin. He truly is sailing two ships with one foot. But no matter what Yang Weibai is determined not to lose face in front of Kim Jisoo. No way, how can I lose to them? Thinking about it, she confidently recounts the gifts Park Jimin has given her. Oh, 500 million is a lot. Park Jimin gave me an office building worth over 2 billion. Ladies, who you think Park Jimin likes more? At this point, suspicion about Park Jimin and Kim Jisoo's heart has started to rise. Could it be that Park Jimin is really having an affair? Were all his previous words just deceiving me? Kim Jisoo is contemplating when Park Min Young speaks up. Actually, Park Jimin also gave me a 1 billion won worth of shares. Park Min Young hesitates, admitting to receiving gifts from Park Jimin, and then apologizes to her younger sister for this action. I'm sorry, Kim Jisoo. The atmosphere among the four girls becomes more stifling, each of them looking uneasy, as if contemplating something. After a while of pondering, Kim Jisoo decides to call Park Jimin. I have to call Park Jimin. Ask clearly why he's having an affair. Being promiscuous like this. Why he still wants to define things with me. She fumbles with her phone to dial. Then suddenly remembers. Wait, it seems Park Jimin has never confirmed our romantic relationship from beginning to end. It's just my misunderstanding. The girl in the green shirt looks at Kim Jisoo with a puzzled expression. Yang Weibai agrees with Kim Jisoo's statement. Hayes. That's right. Every time I mention confirming the relationship, Park Jimin always changes the subject. The girl in the green shirt shifts her gaze to Yang Weibai, and after a moment of contemplation, she realizes, no wonder he doesn't define the relationship. He can remain ambiguous with girls without being morally condemned. Park Jimin indeed plans things well. Feeling heated, Yang Weibai 
stands up determinedly to find Park Jimin and get the truth. I'm going to make Park Jimin explain. Yang Wibai will never share a man with other girls. The girl in the green shirt raises her hand to stop Yang Wibai, as if she has a different plan in mind. This sister is slow. She doesn't realize that not breaking up makes him even more advantageous. Park Jimin, relying on wealth, teasing the emotions of these girls, he deserves a thousand deaths. Due to her anger, Yang Wibai can't think of a better solution. She blankly asks the girl in the green shirt, You say that, but we don't break up. Would it really leave him in peace? After calming down, the four girls collaborate to devise a plan to teach Park Jimin a lesson. What is the asset that Park Jimin uses to deceive people? Money, right? He has too much money. Even if we decisively break up, he won't suffer any loss. He'll just deceive someone else. So we need to do this first. And then, at this point, it will be like this. The four girls now unanimously join forces, each determined to confront a deceiver like Park Jimin. It appears that in this situation, Kim Jisoo's friend in the green shirt is the calmest and offers the most insightful suggestions. Her gaze is profound, containing more resentment than the other girls. She outlines a plan and advises the others to help each other seek revenge, continue pretending to be innocent, cute, act like you don't know anything, then spend his money heavily, spend it aggressively, making him bankrupt, sow the wind and reap the whirlwind. Hearing this ingenious plan from the girl in the green shirt, the other three girls find it very reasonable. Exactly just spend all the damn money from Park Jimin and he won't be able to swagger around anymore. This is retribution for the female community. Switching to Kim Jisoo's villa, she and Sun Sun are currently scheming on how to retaliate against Park Jimin. Kim Jisoo, hesitant after hearing Sun Sun's suggestion, says, Is it really appropriate, Sun Sun? I always feel a bit aggressive in demanding something from others. Sun Sun looks deeply into Kim Jisoo's eyes and says, Sympathizing with those scoundrels is being ruthless to yourself. Just do as I say. Send a message to Park Jimin. Seeing Kim Jisoo still hesitating, Sun Sun urges, If you can't, I'll help you write it. Park Jimin's phone lights up with a message notification. He looks surprised as he sees the message from Kim Jisoo. Park Jimin, Lately I've been wanting to start my own business creating a live stream platform. What do you think? Reading the message, Park Jimin thinks to himself, Ha, huh, wanting to start a live stream platform is quite normal. Is she implying that she wants me to invest money? Or is this her well thought out idea? Or is someone influencing her? Coincidentally, I have the Big Cat TV platform on hand, wondering who I should give it to. After contemplating for a moment, Park Jimin replies to Kim Jisoo's message, Your idea aligns with mine. I've previously acquired a bankrupt livestream platform, BigCat TV, intending to gift it to you. Livestreaming won't last forever, so owning a business is the way to go. I've prepared a 50 billion investment for you. Sun Sun, upon seeing Park Jimin's message, twists her face in surprise. He wants to gift you a livestream company, huh? Kim Jisoo looks at her friend with an indifferent gaze, responding, seems like it. Plus, he's ready to invest 50 billion. Initially planning strategies to squeeze money out of Park Jimin, they never expected him to immediately throw in 50 billion. This leaves Sun Sun infuriated. While Kim Jisoo has a different perspective on Park Jimin, he had everything well thought out, prepared for his own career. At this point, Kim Jisoo no longer blames Park Jimin, but instead feels deeply moved. Despite knowing he's quite cunning, he's genuinely considerate. Not only does he care about my emotions, but he quietly helps me grow. After a while, Sun Sun starts urging again. Kim Jisoo, stop being sentimental. Quickly finish this. 50 billion is not a small amount. Don't let that guy swallow his words later. Kim Jisoo, with her hands on her now tomato red cheeks, asserts, Park Jimin is not that kind of person. He values promises. Sun Sun snatches Kim Jisoo's phone, sending a message to Park Jimin, while muttering, only promises that are fulfilled are true promises. Don't be moved to death just by a cake. Let me help you push him a bit more. Upon receiving Park Jimin's response, Sun Sun immediately bursts into a frenzy as if she wants to crush the phone in her hand. She thinks to herself, Oh my, why can't I meet such a generous man? Even willing to share with others, I would agree immediately. Earlier, fearing that Park Jimin might back out, Sun Sun took Kim Jisoo's phone 
and sent the confirmation message to him. So you agree, don't back out. No problem, tomorrow, someone will handle the paperwork to transfer the company to me. At this moment, in the university dormitory, Park Jimin is lost in thought. The person talking to me on Kim Jisoo's phone is definitely not her. The tone and voice are unfamiliar. Perhaps John Sun Sun, the green tea girl. Anyway, if you want to spend money, I'll let you spend freely until you've had enough. Transitioning to Yang Weibai's home. After returning, she immediately tells her mother about Park Jimin. But her mother doesn't believe it and presses. Are you saying that Park Jimin is having an affair? Today, with some girls, we cross-referenced and found out that he is developing romantic relationships with multiple girls simultaneously. Yang Weibi's mother still can't believe this, saying, Really? In relationships with several girls at the same time, Park Jimin doesn't seem like that kind of person. Yang Weibai slowly sits down on the sofa and continues. Although the relationship hasn't been officially established, it's almost like that. While conversing with her mother, Yang Weibai's phone lights up, and she glances at it, saying, Oh, who's sending messages in the group? Her mother asks in confusion, Which group? Yang Weibai lifts her phone to show her mother and says, This is a group some of us girls created. Inside is the revenge plan against Park Jimin, making him regret. In a group chat named Avengers of Revenge, Kim Jisoo sends a message. Hey, I just told Park Jimin that I want to start a live stream platform, and he immediately gave me Big Cat TV, plus an additional investment of 50 billion. Jun Sun Sun sends 666666 in the group, and Yang Weibai reads the messages, turning red with frustration, muttering, Oh my goodness, he directly hands out 50 billion just like that. What does Kim Jisoo have that I don't? How am I inferior to her in looks? Seeing her daughter's unhappy expression and drawing from the experience of a middle-aged woman, Yang Weibi's mother advises her. Yang Weibai, listen to your mom. I feel like these girls are scheming to deceive you. Yang Weibai is shocked to hear her mother say that. At this moment, Yang Weibai's mother begins to reminisce about her own love story. She emotionally recounts for Yang Weibai. In the past, your father and I, our family backgrounds were vastly different. I worked hard and only then did we finally achieve this happy marriage. After speaking a few sentences, she gently wipes away tears, her face revealing a melancholy expression as she recalls the difficult past. Tears continue to flow from her eyes despite her efforts to hold them back. Yang Weibi's mother recalls the meeting with Park Jimin, remembering his determined expression when he expressed interest in buying shares from the Yang family. Let me put it this way, I'm willing to invest 500 million to buy 60% of the shares of Yang family's Chorm group. From that moment, she sensed that Park Jimin's background was far from ordinary, and she wanted to match her daughter with him to benefit from his wealth. Since then, she has always urged Yang Weibai to capture Park Jimin's heart. Now faced with this ironic situation, her mother provides words of advice. Even though our family resides in Jayongbakum, it's considered quite prestigious compared to Park Jimin's background. It's just a small clan. Your relationship with him is bound to encounter many challenges. She begins to analyze and enlighten Yang Weibai on the intricacies of relationships, helping her understand the complexities often found in romantic affairs. For a young and inexperienced girl in love like Yang Weibai, the advice from a middle-aged woman like her mother proves invaluable. Yang Weibai's mother advised her, Men who stand out too much will attract attention from the girls around them, but you must believe in your own capabilities. Yang Wib Bai lowered her head, blushing. Normally, she was a smart and savvy girl, but for some reason, she felt stuck in this situation. There was a conflict in her mind. Park Jimin is indeed quite flirtatious, but I cannot deny that his status is impressive. Yang Wib Bai hesitated in responding to her mother, but mom, her mother gently placed her hand on Yang Weibai's shoulder, looking straight into her perplexed eyes, and said, Yang Weibai, those girls always talk about Park Jimin in a negative way. So why haven't they left him? Have you thought about that? Her mother's eyes suddenly became deep and mysterious. Yang Weibai's mother affirmed to her daughter, because they all want the other person to leave, to possess the hidden tycoon Park Jimin. After her mother clarified her thoughts, Yang Weibai seemed to understand her intention. Her eyes lit up, so that's how it is. Her mother glanced at Yang Weibai, assessing her reaction, and then urged, The more critical the situation, 
the stronger you must advance, resolve your ties with Part Jimin. Your happiness lies ahead, my daughter. Yang Weibei's spirit became more uplifted. She clenched her hands with determination, saying, Exactly, that's right. These past few days, engaging in a cold war with Part Jimin was a mistake. I can't let other women take advantage of this situation. Hearing Yang Weibei's words, her mother silently rejoiced. After clear thinking, she immediately sent a text to Part Jimin. The young man, dressed in casual clothes, was preparing to go out when his phone lit up. Park Jimin raised his phone with a hint of surprise, but the content of the message from Yang Guibai was even more unexpected. Park Jimin, I apologize. I blamed you wrongly. Frowning, Park Jimin was perplexed. What is this message about? Why is she apologizing to me? Park Jimin began to piece together the events of the day involving Kim Jisoo and Yang Guibai. Today, both Kim Jisoo and Yang Guibai were acting strangely. Couldn't it be that they both know about each other's existence? If that's the case, I need to take the initiative and figure this out. Immediately after, Park Jimin called Yang Weibai. Startled by the ringing phone, Yang Weibai jerked, her legs and arms entangled in confusion. She nervously turned to her mother with pleading eyes. Mom, it's Park Jimin calling. What should I do? Listen to it. He must have sensed my signal. Upon her mother's advice, she quickly picked up Park Jimin's call. Hello, Park, Park Jimin. Park Jimin went straight to the point. Yang Weibai, there's something I feel I need to discuss with you. Recently, I invested in a live streaming app, and then I handed it over to Min Young, Kim Jisoo, to manage. It's nothing special, but I thought I should let you know. Yang Weibai's expression immediately changed, her cheeks flushing. I didn't expect him to talk to me about this. In her mind, she thought, I might have misunderstood Park Jimin. She hesitated before responding. Ah, oh, live streaming, I know about it. After the phone call, Yang Weibai's mother curiously asked her daughter, What did Park Jimin say? Yang Weibai looked at her mother with an indifferent gaze. Park Jimin talked about investing in Kim Jisoo's live streaming app. Her mother nodded approvingly. As I said, in his heart, you are still the most important person. With just one phone call, Yang Weibai's attitude toward Park Jimin had completely changed. She realized, so Park Jimin isn't as bad as I thought. He likes me. Thinking about this, Yang Weibai was moved to tears. He doesn't hide anything from me, and I collaborated with another woman to extort money from him. Recognizing herself as a wicked woman, Yang Weibai cried out loud, I am indeed a wicked woman. Hoo hoo hoo. Her mother held her daughter's hand to comfort her. Oh, my precious daughter, why are you crying? Yang Weibai sniffled, saying, I feel guilty towards Park Jimin. I want to make it up to him. Her eyes suddenly sparkled like stars, and a thought popped into her head. I have to give him a gift. He will surely be surprised. The next day, Kim Jisoo worked with the representative of Big Cat TV, Ms. Kim. Please sign this document. The procedures will be completed. Kim Jisoo quickly signed the document. Oh, all right. So it's done. Yes, it's done. Now, you are the owner of Big Cat TV. Information about Big Cat TV's financial losses is also recorded in the corresponding report, and you can review it. Kim Jisoo, while reviewing the financial report, broke into a cold sweat, her face looking somewhat troubled. A loss of over 10 million. No wonder Park Jimin transferred money to me. If I were to manage the company myself, it would have gone bankrupt before even starting. Kim Jisoo thought to herself, it's just like that but he is reliable and considerate, yet a womanizer. Park Jimin transferred this 20 million without hesitation. I should take some action to reciprocate. Otherwise, I become an ungrateful person. Switching scenes to another central area, Kim Jisoo headed to a car showroom. Looking around, Kim Jisoo pondered to gift the car to Park Jimin. Which car model would he like? I remember he had a Lamborghini before. Maybe I should gift him another Lamborghini. Suddenly, Kim Jisoo jumped at the unexpected scene before her. Ha! Huh, why is it her? The girl in front was Yang Weibai, who was also browsing the cars. Seeing Kim Jisoo in the car showroom, Yang Weibai asked curiously. Kim Jisoo approached with an awkward expression, creating a coincidental moment. Why are you here, Sister Yang? She thought to herself. Why is she here with me? Yang Weibai, sweating as well, replied. Nothing much. It's almost my father's birthday so I came here to choose a birthday gift for him. And what about you? 
planning to buy a car to gift to Park Jimin? Even though it was just a casual response, Yang Weibai secretly thought, Kim Jisoo, is she investigating me? Or does she also want to buy a car to gift to Park Jimin? How could that wretched guy be deserving of it? At this point, Kim Jisoo was sweating profusely, her legs trembling, and she replied, I am just here to buy a birthday gift for my father. Both continued to sweat and feel embarrassed. Really? What a coincidence, huh? Yeah, it's just a genuine coincidence. Out of the blue, a girl's voice echoed, making Yang would buy, and Kim Jisoo turn around. Oh, why are you two here as well? Yang would buy, and Kim Jisoo turned back in unison, asking Park Min Young, Why are you here too? Park Min Young hesitated before replying, Oh, I came to pick a birthday gift for my father. What a coincidence, ha! Huh? Our fathers are all having birthdays soon. Right, right, could it be that we share the same father, ha? Huh? After a moment of pretending to play along, Yang Weibai became serious and said, Buying a birthday gift for your father? Don't fool me. Surely you want to buy a car for Park Jimin. My mom was absolutely right. Punishing that guy is all fake. Speaking of Kim Jisoo, she received 20 million from Park Jimin a few days ago. And now, I don't have as much money in my pocket as she does. I might need financial assistance. Cut to Yang Weibai's mother's house. Upon receiving the call from her daughter, Yang Weibai's mother asked, What's the matter, Yang Weibai? Why did you suddenly call? Planning to gift a car to Park Jimin, but don't have enough money. Don't worry, Yang Weibai. Mom will help you. After hanging up, Yang Weibai's mother called, Uncle Park. Transfer money from the family fund and send it to Yang Weibai. Uncle Park replied, That's not the money. It's for the young master's use when getting married. Yang Weibai's mother interrupted, Uncle Park, please stop talking. The current major issue for the Yang family is tying Park Jimin to our boat. Everything else is not important. The place for the young master can only be for the little one to sacrifice for the family to endure submission. Uncle Park, at this point, had a weary expression. The young master is indeed pitiful. Immediately, Yang Weibai's phone notified her of a bank message. Looking at the received amount, Yang Weibai whispered, Too quick. They transferred 60 million to me. Always thought parents loved their son. Didn't expect them to misunderstand. Mom, rest assured, I won't lose to Kim Jisoo. In another corner of the car showroom, Park Jimin asked, Ah, Ian, has my reserve Bugatti Veyron arrived? Quite fast, huh? Park Jimin, focus on your work, rest assured. Let's go to the VIP lounge and sign the contract. At this moment, Park Jimin, the young man, scanned the surroundings, then suddenly had a nosebleed. There were many beautiful women at this car exhibition, the gorgeous models of car manufacturers with well-proportioned figures, perfectly rounded chests, and ideal curves, making it a visually pleasing day for the young man. After checking out all the beautiful girls, he thought, if it were in the past, I wouldn't have dared to approach. Unexpectedly, the young man spotted Kim Jisoo and Yang Wei Bai talking to each other. What's happening here? Kim Jisoo and Yang Wei Bai came together. Are they close? Then he noticed Park Min Young in the mix. Seeing the three girls seeming friendly, the young man thought, This is a trio of sworn sisters. With women's keen intuition, Park Min Young always felt something was up. Strange, always feel like someone is watching me, she thought. Kim Jisoo, noticing Park Min Young deep in thought, asked, What's wrong? Min Young, let's continue looking. Meanwhile, Park Jimin bent down, avoiding the situation, prompting Ayan to ask with confusion. Park Jimin contemplated, Even though I expected there would be a day when I'd be turned down, I didn't think it would happen so quickly. It seems they both know each other's existence. But even so, they haven't severed ties with me. It looks like they still can't bear to cut me off. At this moment, Ah and noticed Park Jimin's peculiar expression and asked, Chairman Bakyun, are you okay? Is there anything uncomfortable? After all, both of them have a favorability score of over 95, and vice versa is an opportunity for me to turn the tables. After a brief thought, Park Jimin replied to Ah in No worries, just had a muscle cramp a moment ago. By the way, Chairman Yu, which is the most expensive car here for you guys today. Ayan seemed well prepared for the question. Because I've spent a lot of thought today, the three most expensive cars tonight are the Pagani Zonda, Lamborghini Poison, and the Bugatti Veyron you reserved. 
Hart Jimin decisively said, All right, I want all three. Give me the prices. This unique buying introduction by Part Jimin left Alan stunned. All three? Using three cars to test the solidarity of your alliance. Oh. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video. If you enjoyed the content, please don't hesitate to hit the like and share buttons. Your support is a huge motivation for me to continue creating more videos. Additionally, there are many other interesting story videos on my channel, so feel free to check them out. Thank you.